Welcome back to Takeus McGinnis Elder Care Law Hour. I'm Tim Takeus, and today we are exploring resources that may not be known to you. And I'm Barbara McGinnis. In this segment, we'll be talking with Lynn Woods from uh, Mental Health America of Middle Tennessee, and she's going to talk to us about resources for grandparents that are raising grandchildren. That's right. That's that, right. That's a growing problem, isn't it, Lynn? It is a growing problem. And first of all, thank you so much for having me here, and some of these topics that I've been listening to are just so going to be beneficial to my grandparents that I'm dealing with and working with. So, yeah. Just statistically, start with telling us... How big of an issue is this for Tennesseans? Well, for Tennesseans, we, um, this is an old number, maybe 2015, 16, mm -hmm. we had 70,000 uh, Tennesseans who were grandparents raising grandchildren. Nationwide, we're around 2.6, 2.7. Million. Million. Um, and that's not the number of kids because the kid uh -huh. number is much higher because right. you think, yeah. you know, yeah. some folks have, I know a lady who had six grandchildren, she's raised them all. Right. So wow. uh, that number. So 70,000 in Tennessee, 70,000 households, households, basically. Yes. Grandparents raising grandparents grandchildren. Grandparents raising grandchildren. Wow. And so every time I mention this, um, people's eyes get bigger and like, oh my gosh, this is, this is something we need to talk about. And yeah. they were not. So, so Lynn, how does this happen? Well, I think that the biggest thing that happens is be, be, the grandparents don't want the kids to go into foster care. So they agree to take them into their homes. So what happens to the parents? Well, or? the parents, it could be any number of things. Uh -huh. It could be mental illness. It could be um, abuse to the children. What we see a lot of the times, according to psychology today, is the major factor is the opioid um, uh -huh. drug abuse. So they've either been removed from uh, the families by the state because of uh, neglect, because that money's gone to drug use, or uh, the person themselves um, has taken their life, has died by suicide maybe, or a drug uh -huh. overdose, uh, accidental. And so that leaves those grandparents as the ones. And the states do call the grandparents first. They do want to try to keep families um, intact. But um, the idea of a child going into foster care, that grandparents' fear is, will I see them? How, mm -hmm. how much exposure will I have to my grandchild? And so that's really what their motivating factor is. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's understandable. I mean, it it's, is. It's sad, but it's, it's all understandable. Mm -hmm. um, parenting is hard, no matter right how old we are, but there mm -hmm. might be unique challenges for being a grandparent parenting. That's uh, right. What are, talk about that. It's like stage two, you know, parenting point two, because you're doing mm -hmm. it all over again. Not only the financial aspect, which is one of the things with Josh that was so interesting, is, you know, you take this child into your home, and now you have to clothe them and feed them and pay for school books and, you know, health care and all of this stuff. And so it is a financial burden. Um, when you think you're planning for retirement, uh, you might have downsized a home, and now you have more kids coming in, so now maybe there's another home that has to be purchased to mm -hmm. house this. Um, health care, we know as caregivers, they often neglect their own health care when they're dealing with someone who has Alzheimer's or dementia. Um, it's the same thing with someone who's caring for a grandchild because mm -hmm. everything goes into that child and so they may not uh, get their annual exams or take care of their dental hygiene or anything like that, which can then pose a health problem um, to those um, to that caregiver, and then what happens to the child? Mm -hmm. You know, this is twice now their life will have been disrupted. Mm -hmm. So, so where does the money come from? Do they have to the parent? Do the grandparents have to pay out of their own pocket? You or? know, this is one of the things that I've just has become um, on my to do list is to try to figure out what this, um, how this all works. And I was uh, talking to some folks about the legal ramifications, where the money comes from. Um, it's going to depend on. Uh, um, are there death benefits that that child has that now can be a added to the income of the senior parent or the senior grandparent? Yeah, assuming um, the parent died or whatever. Yeah. Exactly, uh -huh. exactly. There's a, a lot of state services. It does fall onto the state in a lot of cases with the, the 10 care uh, programs and what's out there. And so one of the things I'm working on, and this is a new thing that we've developed working with grandparents at Mental Health America of the Mid-South. Um, this is something that just kind of fell in my lap with a person 
personal uh, relationship I have with the lady who's raising twin sons, twin grandsons, and she kept calling me because I'm a resource. So she kept reaching out because she also has aging parents. So now she's dealing with aging parents as caregiving, and now her grandparents. There's actually a term for it. It's called club sandwich families. Ooh. So you have that person who has their adult children, and now maybe they're raising grandchildren, and then they have a senior parent. And so, I mean, the situation is vast, yeah. and the complications are numerous. So right. um, that's why I like coming on things like this or getting to know people. Where are those resources? Where can I send them uh, to help navigate this? And what, what's the role of Mental Health America with that? Is that counseling, support groups? We actually are starting our very first support group, uh -huh. um, which will be held in the Williamson County area. It's open to anyone. It doesn't matter if you have a grandchild that's a newborn or um, an adolescent. Um, and it's going to be the third Tuesdays of each month at uh, Brentwood Baptist Church. Uh, the church is gifting us a room there, so um, this will be. Uh, I will be starting to facilitate this and really just see what's what their situations are. You know, we talk about journey that the caregiver is on with aging. Well, what is the journey that that grandparent is on? And I I don't know. I'm not a grandparent, but yeah. um, I can help find those resources um, because they are going to be seniors and. That's what my focus is, is that senior population and how to best help them navigate. Mm -hmm. What about the legal part of this? Because one thing that I'm thinking of is, is that, you know, we're talking about some of these obviously are they're minor children. Yes. So the court somehow has to be involved, which right. means either there's like a guardianship sure. of some sort, you know, that yep. which n needless right. to say, typically that costs money because mm -hmm. you know, it's the private bar unless someone steps up and donates. Right, right. Well, it just so happened that you talked to someone from legal aid earlier, right, so I've sure. been taking notes. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the Council on Aging has a great handbook. It's called Empower Empowering Grandparents, and it goes through a lot of the terminology with the um, legality of this and uh, guardianship and adoption and you know assets and all of that I will not even touch the legal part of uh -huh. a grandparent raising a grandchild my job is to provide that support kind of reinforce you can be angry you can be sad you can grieve the loss of your retirement right. mm -hmm. but how do we keep this from going into a depression or an anxiety situation right. and hopefully that's what the support group is going to do and it will expand there's a lot of great support groups online and mm -hmm. if you get onto Facebook and you look up grandparents raising grandchildren then there are there are groups out there but I didn't even know that so um, it's just from this one lady who mm -hmm. needs and came to me for help that I've seen this vast array of help that's out there. Even in New Orleans, I did a conference down there and there was Generations United and it is for those grand families and what are, what is out there nationwide to help these families uh, keep their kids and raise mm -hmm. them um, for a second time, you know, mm -hmm. with maybe a mental issue or something because of the loss of a parent. Mm -hmm. I, I've it, learned new words today, grand families and the club sandwich mm -hmm. and this is all from this new phenomenon. It's, it's not, it's not new, new, but it's growing. It's not new, and um, it is growing, and uh, we have to be able to empower our grandparents. Uh, you know, our, our, you're, you're looking at 50 to 70 years old, but sometimes those grandparents can be into the 80s. Sure. So um, then if you're looking at mental health, it, you know, there's just a lot that goes, that goes so into So we're going to put your contact information please, up. We've got do. like 30 yeah. seconds maybe. So right. so, so Mental right. Health of America, the mm -hmm. Mid-South. Of course, thank you always You're for being here. You're very welcome. And that support group's this month. This It rolls out this month. Uh, third Tuesday. If they're interested, dying. call you. Call me. Call, right. call, uh, get on call, the website, yes. figure out what you mm -hmm. need to do. Definitely. Well, we're going to wrap this up. Thank okay. you, Leanne. You're very thank welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tim. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've actually got our outgo. Oh, we do. Yeah. So I'm Tim Takus. So for more information about the organizations and resources that we mentioned in today's program, visit our website at tn-elderlaw.com uh, um, and click on the News Hour tab. So sure, sure to tune in again for the next episode when we talk about issues involving aging, disability, and unexpected illness.